Hey everyone, and welcome back to Mission Impact Series with Tracy and Ty. Um, this is part two of how do trends affect social impact businesses? So last time we talked about how it impact, impacts board members and how to deal with some situations that may arise with your board because of things that are happening in our society right now. And this time we're gonna talk, and I kind of alluded to it at the end of last one, right? <laughs> um, so we're gonna talk about donors and contributors. So donors, nonprofits, right? Because anytime people hear donations, they think about tax exemption. So we changed the word for um, social in impact businesses and we call it contributions. So that is what we're going to talk about today is how what's happening in our society can adversely or positively affect the amount of donations and contributions that you get and how you solicit those donations and contributions. So this, if, you, if this is your first time catching us, my name is Tracy V. Allen. I am the owner of TVA Consulting Group, where I help change agents to design, build, and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyle that they desire while impacting their communities. All right. I'm Ty Boone. I'm owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. And you know what? Every day somebody trying to, how do I get donations? How, how, how do I get, you know? One big thing, and, and I think it's because a lot of people just get busy just doing stuff where that mm -hmm. they're not watching the trends. They're not mm -hmm. there. There's actual public reports about how people give and why they right. give and where they give and what they're interested in without deviating from your mission, knowing where you fit within the trend. Right. Will mm -hmm. help you to, to, to have that conversation with potential donors about how you want them to give, knowing what your what your give your goals are, you know, your mm -hmm. fundraising goals. How how much do you need to raise and why do right. you need to raise this amount of money? Does it even make sense for this organization um to raise this amount of money to do the thing that they're trying to do? Um and, and I think it's a, it's a lot of homework and a lot of research that goes into it that it we're is. kind of missing and we're not doing it. And mm -hmm. we're just thinking, oh I'm gonna fundraise. <laughs> And that's it. And then when that, when it doesn't have a good outcome, you're wondering why. Like why did why didn't they give to me? First of all, the funding trends are not over there; they're over here. Mm -hmm. You know, people are giving. Um, when you're talking about individual donors, they're still giving from their heart. So when 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 you have a cause that they could connect with and they have the money for it, mm -hmm. then they're more likely to give. But you also have to know about them. You know, how do you connect? What are their core values? Have they already given to other people? Are you asking them at the right time? You know, those kind of things that we I think we forget and we just jump out and start asking folks for money. Yeah, um, I agree. Um, looking at the trends, the type of people, because the trends do tell you the type of people that are giving men, women, um, age range, salary, profession, looking at all of those things and then creating a funding plan around that demographic of people. Mm -hmm. And it tells you what type of organizations they're donating to too. So making sure that your organization fits into that capacity of people who are looking to donate to your type of cause, right? Mm -hmm. And then getting the team together. Um, training, again, we go back from to that from, I think the first one that we did, which was, um, complicated times and simple issues, mm -hmm. um, having some training, have a, a fundraiser, um, a fundraising strategist come in and do some serious fundraising strat um, strategy with your team, telling them how to approach people. Because like Ty alluded to in the last one, some people just don't like asking for money. And if they feel like their financial situation is a little touchy, then they may not want to ask people for money. So helping to um, come up with um, answers that um, counteract rejection, right? Mm -hmm. um, some people don't like to hear no, right? But like I told someone, you don't take those no's personally. They're not telling you no personally. They're mm -hmm. telling you no, because no, they don't connect to your organization. No, they don't have the money to actually donate, but they're not going to tell you that. So the no, it's not a personal. They're not telling you no because they don't like you or, you know, we take it things so personally, but that's not what it is. But having someone come in, really break down the trends for you. This is what's going on. This is where your organization can get its um, pool of money from. This is the best type of fundraiser to have for your specific type of organization. This is realistically based on what past performances and what the market is saying, 
that you can actually raise. You know what I mean? So you're not out there just expelling a lot of effort with no results because that's where, oh, this is not working comes in, right? We get really disappointed. We um, think that we ourselves are a failure and not that the product that we put out was a failing. So really and truly taking those trends, what's going on in our community today, like a lot of people may not have a lot of that disposable income that they used to have because my God, gas prices, like let's talk about gas prices are just ridiculous, right? So we're paying more for food. We're paying more for gas. Some people are paying way more for their, um, their apartments. So a lot of people don't have the disposable income that they had where they could just drop you a $5,000 check or a $1,000 check or whatever. Not that they still don't want to give, but what they give may be way less than they've given in the past. So having an expert come in and really breaking down the trends for you, um, telling you what the realism is and having um, a plan in place to train your staff to go out and solicit on your behalf. Mm-hmm. And you have to, con- you know, th- you know, definitely consider the fact you, you mentioned a couple sessions ago that w- when somebody's asking for money and if you're if you're you're saying, OK, we have a program to provide shelter and you don't have a place to stay yourself. How effective are you going to be, you know, doing right. that? Thing? So the same thing for your donors, if you're asking, they're not going to tell you because that's a personal thing. Like, OK, I'm not going to tell them. I don't even know right. them. <laughs> that I'm financially. Um, and on the other end of that, if you're someone who is who's asking someone um, for that kind of for money, understand that it is not about you. It's about those people that you serve. So if you are in a position where you're also homeless, you're going to take it first because you're like, OK, because I know we need this, whatever you're, you're trying to advocate for somebody else. So when you move yourself out of the way and, and, and think about the people that you serve, you're going to be more likely to give um, support and also reconsider in kind, mm-hmm. you know. And, uh, and people get mad a lot of times because people want to, you know, I'll give you a computer, but I don't have five hundred dollars. Like, well, I need cash. I got to do. What are you going to do with the computer? You're going to you're going to put it in the program. You're going to do the work. So mm-hmm. sometimes you accept that kind of stuff. Right now, you have people who are moving and they, they're giving away stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? um, and maybe they don't have any cash, but maybe they'll give you their old furniture or whatever it is. Right. And some people turn their nose up on in kind. But in kind equals cash because that's money you didn't have to spend on whatever that person donated to you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So that's it for um, donors and contributors. Um, If you have any questions, drop them below. Our contact information is below as well. And stay tuned for the next one because we're going to be talking about volunteers because it impacts them too. (laughs) Bye, everyone.